Well, hello and welcome to, uh, studying for a test that I did not even know was coming up. That test is tomorrow. And, um, well, I've got my hands full. I figured having uh, someone beside me would make this a little bit more bearable. So let's just make sure the microphone is perfect. So let's, uh... This first graph, if we sketch a tangent line at this red point, notice how the slope would be positive, and therefore, the first derivative All is right. positive or greater than zero at that point. Also notice that over this interval here, the function is increasing until it reaches this high point, and therefore the function is increasing over this interval, and therefore the first derivative would be positive over this entire interval as well. Looking at our second example, if we sketch a tangent line at this red point, notice how the slope of the tangent line would be negative, which means the first derivative is less than zero at that point. Also notice this function is decreasing over this interval here, which means the first derivative would be negative over this entire interval. Let's take a look at two more examples. If we sketch a tangent line at this red point, notice how the slope of the tangent line will be negative, and therefore the first derivative is negative at that point. And once again, notice how the function is decreasing over this entire interval here, going downhill from left to right, therefore the first derivative would be negative over this entire interval. And now for our last example, if we sketch a tangent line at this point here, Notice how this point is a low point on the graph, and therefore the slope of the tangent line would actually be horizontal. The slope of any horizontal line is zero, and therefore the first derivative is equal to zero at that point. That also means the x-coordinate of this point would be a critical number. I hope you found this helpful. Yeah, no, that's a little bit helpful. It's embarrassing I got that one wrong. So it's going up, it's going to be positive. Beautiful. Ah, uh, okay. F of negative two. <laughs> Approximate the tangent line. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it being that, but negative two, right there. It's on a pretty okay course for this. It's gonna be down one over two. So the value of that. Yeah, let's just watch these videos then. We want to use the graph of f of x to estimate the value of f prime of 4 for the value of the derivative function when x equals 4. Okay, okay. f prime of 4 is equal to the slope of the tangent line at x equals 4. It's also the instantaneous rate of change of the function at x equals 4. So for the first step, we'll locate the point of the function when x equals 4, which will be here. Now we'll sketch the tangent line at this point and find the slope of the line. So the red line is our tangent line, and I will find two points on this line in their coordinates to find the slope of the line. We can go ahead and use the point of tendency here, with coordinates 4, 3. Let's use this point here. Well, that doesn't work. Coordinates five, one. Now to find the slope of this line, we can use our slope formula here the slope is equal to the change of y divided by the change of x, but we can also find the slope using the coordinate plane. So we're going to go from the point on the left to the point on the right, because now we have to go down two units, which means the change of y is negative two, and then we have to go right one unit, so the change of x is positive one. 
which means f prime of 4, which is equal to the slope of our tangent line, is equal to negative 2 divided by 1, or just negative 2. Our other option is to use the slope formula here, and I'll also show that. So if we call these the 1s, well, the x sub 1 comma y sub 1, y, x, right, y flies. Down 1 over 2, negative 1, half. Hmm, okay. I'm still going to watch the other videos. Let's take a moment and discuss what this actually means. With f final 4 is equal to negative 2 over positive 1, which is equal to the change of y over the change in the function value divided by the change of x. This tells us that when x equals 4, the function value is changing at a rate of negative 2 units per 1 unit change of x. I hope you found this helpful. Yep, I guess I did. We want to use the graph of f of x to estimate the value of f prime of 3 for the value of the derivative function when x equals 3. Mm, okay, when x equals 3. I mean, I'm seeing that's pretty much right one y x one over one. F prime of three, fine at this point. Let's also use this point here, or we can also this is also fine or positive one. Yeah. F prime. Yep. No, that's that's good stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah. What is this? What is that? We want to graph the function that would give the slope of the tangent lines to the given function graphed here in red. Well, the function that gives the slope of the tangent lines would be the derivative function. So we're given f of x. You're going to derive this? F prime of x. So looking at the graph of f of x, let's first consider the graph on the interval from negative infinity to positive 2 we have the sharp point in the graph. So we can okay, the so first I'm thinking that's uh, huh. this interval here, the interval is going to be open on 2, meaning it won't include 2 because of this out. Because of the sharp point, you can't sketch a tangent line, and therefore the derivative function would be unfunded. So again, we're considering this on the interval from negative infinity to positive 2, over on positive 2. Because the function is linear on this interval, let's select any point on the function in this interval, let's say this point here, the tangent line would contain this linear segment of the function. For example, here's the tangent line to the function at this point, and notice how it contains this function on this interval. Which means we can use the slope of the function on this interval to determine the slope of the tangent line. So to select two points on this interval, let's say this point here and this point here, we can use these two points to determine the slope of the function, which should also be the slope of the tangent line. Notice we go from this first point to the second point, we have to go down one unit, which means the change of y is negative 1, and then right 1 unit, which means the change of x is positive 1. Which means on this interval, the slopes of the tangent lines would be the change of y divided by the change of x, or negative 1 divided by 1. Or just or negative 1. So now to graph the derivative function, which again will give the slope of the tangent lines, you have the constant function, y equals negative 1, on the interval from negative infinity to two, open up to. 
photograph of something like this. But what if I don't have uh, markers right, to so go by? They have an open point. It is good for the other What's this, negative 2? And I'll consider f of x. They're all positive, and this one's, no, wait. So B, E, F. And again, notice how it is. This one's about positive 1. Let's say F is closest. It's E. Once again, the tangent lines, I'm going to contain the function. Huh. So once again, we can use this and then write. Yeah, it's all well and good when I can count, but that's a little ridiculous. Okay, that's positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And that's one on one. 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 This is. And again, we cannot sketch a tangent minor x equals 2. So our derivative is 2. So it's going to be negative 1 and then 2. And then to write a positive e's two, closest. On the open interval from 2 to infinity, this piece here, C. The slopes of the tangent lines would be. Oh, positive. I said it was positive. Nah. Well, regardless, I realized a second ago this is the wrong thing. I should just be working through doxing my bad grades did not do well this last week and I didn't study because I didn't do well and it made me feel bad I should have been more motivated this whole week's this has been a bad week bad week um, not drowning yet but a very sporadic just hard to keep track of uh, I'm just trying to get my head straight I don't think I've missed any work, but it's definitely been a lot more work. It's just hard to keep track. So I should be starting from 2.5. So let's uh, switch this keyboard out real quick. Ah, uh, keyboard, sorry. Uh, whatever you call this drawing tablet. None of this, none of this is on the test. The test only goes to, I'll see, test 2.0 through 2.5. So maybe it might touch on 2.5, but the whole rest of this, it doesn't even go on. So I should be working on uh, from here to here. But I'm gonna start by kicking out this, going back to the test review then going through these. So Let's just restart that. Hold on, sorry.
Okay, so now that I've written down the top stuff, uh, I will just think about this, although I'm not going to do it, I'm writing this in pen, I'm writing notes, um, but uh, yes. And you guys are going to be seeing probably more of this video. Uh, the thing I noticed about this guy's test is it's a two hour test. But, you know, you, you're given like 30 problems. So, you spend two minutes on a problem, you know, each. It's going to be an hour. If you spend four minutes on a problem each, you can probably do the math. So it's, you know, you got to know it, you know, if you're spending four minutes jumping back and forth between, you know, your notes, which it's, it's an open notes test, but if you don't know it and just, you know, have to reference your, you know, notes briefly, but just looking through the notes, my gosh, it was a time crunch. I got a pretty good grade on the last test, but I kind of knew my stuff uh, this one it's it's gonna be not so good uh, yeah Give me one second all right I'm back let's see Function, but 
But in many cases, I'll just leave it in existing form and apply the appropriate political formula. For number two, notice we have a quotient of two functions. So we are going to have to apply the quotient rule. For the sake of time, I've already set up the quotient rule. You may want to pause and verify this. Let's go ahead and do the next step by finding these derivatives. X to the fourth times 1 over u times root prime, or just u prime over yeah. 1. That's interesting. I didn't know you could do that with uh, ln of a uh, function like that. First function. And this would be our g, our second function. And I've already set up the product rule again just to save some time. First, enter the second, put the second, and the derivative of the first. Let's go ahead and find our derivatives. The derivative of 2 natural log x would be 2 times 1 over x plus 2 natural log x times the derivative of 2 e to the x. Remember the derivative of e to the u is e to the u times u prime. So we have e to the 2x. So we have e to the 2x times 2. We can simplify to this. Notice we have two fractions. So if we wanted to combine these fractions, we'd have to obtain a common denominator multiplied this fraction by x over x. To result in this, it was just the extra factor of x in this term. Now, this numerator does factor, which would be optional, so it's not going to simplify, but I'll go ahead and factor out the common factor of 2 e to the 2x, which result in 1 plus 2x natural log x inside the parentheses. Again, on this problem, I do have the option of rewriting this as log x plus log of x minus 9, but I'll leave it in its current form. We'll just use a u value of x squared minus 9x. Here's our derivative formula for log base a of u. So applying our derivative formula, our denominator is going to be natural log a times u, so the natural log of 4 times x squared minus 9x times u prime. The derivative of our u value would be 2x minus 9. Nothing's going to simplify here, so we have 2x minus 9 all over natural log 4 
See, that is interesting. You can just uh, break that up like that by subtracting. That's um. This is why you take pre-calculus, because <laughs> I don't know any of this stuff, man. Or maybe that's still algebra. I still don't know it. I had terrible teachers, but I was also a terrible student. No credit to the teachers, though. They were genuinely not great. I don't know how much of this uh, is making sense to me, to be very honest, which is not a good thing. And through watching this video and taking notes and trying to follow along, I'm not sure that watching it again will do me much better. So when I finish this, I'm going to actually watch like a Nancy Pye or chem tutor. So in order to find the slope of the tangent line, of course, we have to find the derivative. So our u value is going to be natural log x. So we're going to treat this as if it was u squared and apply the power rule. So f prime of x is equal to 2u to the first times u prime. So 2 natural log x to the first power times u prime, which is 1 over x. So our derivative function will be 2 natural log x divided by x. And no, these x's do not take fun. If we want to find the slope of the tangent line, we have to evaluate the derivative function at x equals 0.5. This is approximately negative 2.7726. Now, to take some time, I've already determined that the 
approximate y value of this point is 0 0.4805. So the equation of our tangent line will be y minus y1, 0 0.4805, equals negative 2.7726 times x minus 0 0.5. If we solve this for y, we will obtain the equation y equals negative 2.7726x plus 1.8668. Now there is a quick way to determine if we found the value of this derivative correctly. If you go to your graphing calculator and hit math option 8, then you type in the function comma x comma the desired value of x, 0.5, and you enter, it will find the value of the derivative at a given x value. So we did our work correctly. Let's go ahead and verify this with a graph. Notice we have a y-intercept that's close to 2 and a slope that's close to negative 3. Here's our point of tangency. And you can see we have a y-intercept that's roughly 2 and a slope that's roughly negative 3. Our work has been verified. Thank you for watching. Okay. Chem Tutor has it. Does Nancy Pye have it? I think she's the uh, best at explaining. Okay. Oh my god, get out of here, Nancy. That was a jump scare. Uh, calculus derivatives. Oh, what the heck are you doing? Quotient rule, power rule, tangent line. Hmm. Nope, Nancy Pye does not. This one looks like a good one. See that? That one also looks good. This one's mostly logs. I guess I will watch both. Both. I'm going to determine the derivative of each of the given functions. Oh, this one's going to go quick. So let me just write that down. Oh, and it blocks it. Thanks, man. All right. So the one sixth is gonna so get derived out. Would be equal to 2x. So now we can think of this as one sixth. Okay. Six 
multiply this, I'm just going to have 1 6 times 2, that would be 2 6 or 1 third x to the power of x squared. And then for our last example, we have f of x equals 4 times e to the power of square root x. So here, e would be equal to the square root of x. But in order to determine root prime, we can write this as x to the power of 1 half. So we have an index of 2 and an exponent of 1. So root prime would be 1 half times x to the power of negative 1 half. And then simplifying this, we have 1 all over 2 x to the 1 half in the denominator, which we can write as the square root of x. So now we can think of this as 4 times e to the u. So f prime of x is equal to 4 times the third of e to the u, which is just e to the u times e prime, so e to the square root x power times 1 over 2 square root of x. And we'll go ahead and simplify this. Well, 4 times 1 half would be 2. So we have 2 e to the power of the square root of x divided by the square root of x. So the main thing to remember here is that the exponent is the function of x other than just x we do have to apply the chain rule given by the second formula. We'll take a look at several more examples in the next video. Oh, spoiler alert. Why is that? <laughs> what? <laughs> I think, yeah, that's it for this. You purchase a new car for $16,000. The value of your car after two years is given by the function where t is the number of years after the purchase, and t is the value of your car in dollars. So you know the value of a new car over time decreases before the car depreciates. This is an example of that situation. We're asked to determine v of 1, v prime of t, and then v prime of 1, as well as the typical results. So if v of t is the value of the car after t years, v of 1 will be the value of the car after 1 year. So to determine v of 1, we'll replace t with 1 in the given function. So we have 16,000 times 0 0.78, which is 12,480, and this would be in dollars. So again, this tells us the value of the car after one year is $12,480. The next thing I want us to determine the derivative of the value function. Well, the derivative will represent the rate of change of the value with respect to the change in t or the change of years. And those could have an exponential function, so we'll have to apply the derivative formula given here below. So notice a is equal to 0 0.78, so v prime of t. We'll have 16,000 times the derivative of 0 0.78 to the power of t, which would be the natural log 0 0.78 times 0 0.78 to the power of t. Our derivative is natural log a times a to the t. And again, a was 0 0.78. And again, this is going to measure the rate of change of the value of the car with respect to the time. So to determine v prime of 1, we'll place t with 1 in the derivative function. So 16,000 natural log 0 0.78 times 0 0.78 to the first power. So v prime of 1 is going to be equal to this product. Hmm. This is approximately negative three thousand one hundred dollars and eighty cents per year. So this means that after one year, the value.
value of the car is depreciating or decreasing in value at a rate of negative three thousand one hundred dollars and eighty cents per year. Oh, that's all right. Well, that's uh, the whole thing for two point five. Done. <laughs> Here we go. This is where it gets juicy. Okay. So it's saying let f of x equal the natural log of x squared. All right, see where this is going. Plus twelve x plus forty five. Okay, so this is going to be the U, I believe, or I don't know. So it's just going to be Ellen. Um, I will, I will refer to. Uh, I always just go to the video. Yeah. So. It's going to be a u equals x squared plus 12x plus 45 and then u prime equals 2x plus 12. I think it's just going to be u over u prime. So no u prime over u. ln u equals u prime over u. So this is just going to be equal to 2x over x squared plus 12x plus 45. Whoa. Oh, 2x plus 12. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. I was like, wait a second. What? Um, okay. So this is again is going to be the U. I'd like to think it's going to be U equals 2x, U prime equals 2, and this is just going to be 2x over 2. Okay, 2 over 2x, yeah. Four over X.
Now let's begin to actually use it. This is because it uses the chain rule for natural log x. So z would be equal to x. And the prime would just be x. So let's take a look at our first example. We have f of x equals 2 times natural log x. So f prime of x should be equal to 2 times the derivative of natural log x, which is 1 over x, so 1 divided by x. Okay. Okay. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's see if I got that. So f of x equals 5 ln 5x. That's so bad handwriting. Uh, it's going to be u. u equals 5x. u prime equals 5. This is going to be 5 times 5 over 5x, aka 25 over 5x, aka 5 over x. Oh, beautiful. Makes me feel good. Uh, this would just be what? This? Beautiful. Puts a smile on my. Well, I'm not smiling. I'm too tired for that. Puts a smile on my heart. <laughs> this one does not spark joy. Okay. This is no video to help. What is this nonsense? Hmm. So I will have to consult my handy dandy notes that I'm not good at writing. Should all be in here. So it says here that. Nah, I want this. It says here. D over DX log A. Well, make a little bit clearer. Log base A. That's not clear anyway. Of X. This equals 1 all over ln A times X. That's going to be hard to remember. But let's try it anyway, because it's sitting right in front of us. But um, LNA is going to be negative 2 times 1 over. Ln six x to be negative two all over ln six x. Okay. Can I copy pasta? Just make it this. Perfect. That's the kind of cheese I like. This one is okay. So this is U. Uh -huh.
almost remember seeing this. But I don't see it in my notes. Oh, whoa, whoa, this is from a whole different unit. Well. So they do have it as u, so this is, this says it equals u to the fourth, actually this is the third, and uh, it really is just going to be, okay. So it's going to be 1 times lnx, I believe, which is just lnx. So it's going to be natural log of x, 3 lnx squared. Mm, let's try it. Ooh, wait. Yes. No. Okay. Let's think about it a little bit harder. What it really is. Whoa, there goes the pen. All right. What it really is is 1 over x over ln x. And this itself is like 1 over x. Divided by would it be this? Dividing by dividing is multiplying. So keep keep it, change it, flip it. Okay, so it's ln x over x, 3, okay. Keep doing that. Whoa, 3 over x? Let's do this all over again. Um, all right. This is u, u equals ln x, u prime equals one over x, this is going to be equal to u to the fifth. Now, to, to take this derivative, we're going to move this here. 
Let's see, five u to the fourth. Just take this derivative. It's going to be u prime over u. Keep it. Change it. Flip it. So we're left with 5 ln x over x to the 4th. That's how I'm thinking about it. It's wrong. Because I have to make 5 divided by x. No. Divide 5 by x, keep ln the same. Alright. That I just don't get. So what they're telling me to do is, let's try it. Not to, it's always coming out as ln x over x four to the third. So what I'm going to need to do is to do four over x ln x to the third. That's I think what it wants. Yep, just don't get it. Let's watch. Sometimes there's confusion about the different pairs. So for this x, okay. the more you find, the more you get, the more you want to find the x. So now we can take an assumption as e to the fourth, and the five is going to power rule. So we have f times of x is equal to the root of the e to the fourth with respect to the x, that would be. Aha, that's where the chain rule is. Okay. Now I get that. Okay. I was doing the chain rule for the inside instead of chain ruling the whole outside. And a quick copy pasta. Hopefully. Yep, copy pastas. Okay, so you I think I've done this one before, so it should should be pretty fine. U equals x to the six. U prime equals six x to the fifth. X to the six over six x to the fifth. No. There's a special rule for exponents in the ln, isn't there? So from what I'm seeing in my own notes, is this equals why does it say this equals 1 over x to the 6th 
Well, the prime times the derivative. And then we put it together and simplify, which it doesn't. So is it really 6x to the 5th over x to the 6th? Yes, it is, isn't it? I just had the u prime and the u upside down. And of course, Six e to the third to the fifth, e to the third to the sixth. Do I have to like simplify? Six, twelve, eighteen. I don't get it. All right. <laughs> okay. So they're saying f of x equals 4 6x plus 5 find f prime of x so I don't get where the natural log really comes in to be very honest I think any of these have well it's just applications of the chain rule Okay. Huh. I'm gonna have to watch a video on this. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Ah, there it is. So A to the X. Huh. Okay. This is going to be natural log 4 times. No way. Just straight up that again? Uh, this is going to be a u substitution, isn't it, though? So I'm going to do it that way just to be safe. So f prime of x. Oh, first let's get the u function in there. u equals 6x plus 5. u prime equals 6. And this is just going to be log 4 times 4 6x plus 5 times 6 so can I leave it like that 6 oh that's 7 Perfect. Two natural log Ooh, trig functions. Why? I was having fun, man. Killing my vibe. Oh, double prime of X. Ah. Sine is cosine, so it's going to be 2. 
Uh, first off, that's gonna be you. You prime equals cosine x and you double prime equals secant. negative sign weird so it's gonna be ooh oh that's three. Given f of x equals four times natural log of cosine x, we would find f prime of x, f prime of pi over four, f double prime of x, and f double prime of pi over four. The first thing we should notice about our function is it's a composite function where the outer function is a natural log function and the inner function is cosine x. And since we have a composite function, to find our first derivative, we will have to apply the chain rule. I provided the derivative formulas, given here in red, that include the chain rule, where u is equal to the inner function, and therefore the derivatives are a product, where the first factor is the derivative of the outer function, and the second factor, u prime, is the derivative of the inner function. So again, going back to f of x, since cosine x is the inner function, we let u equal cosine x. So if u is equal to cosine x, we'll go ahead and find u prime, the derivative of u with respect to x, which would be negative sine x. Which means f prime of x would be equal to the derivative of 4 natural log u, which would be equal to 4 times 1 over u times u prime. So we have 4 times 1 over u, which is 1 over cosine x, times u prime, which we already know. Wait, 1 over u is 4? Derivative of 4 natural log u, which would be equal to 4 times 1 over u times u prime. Mm. So we have 4 times 1 over u, which is 1 over cosine x, times u prime. Which we already know of is negative sine. One over sine is a thing though, but. So again, we've applied the chain rule here. Well, this is the derivative of the outer function, and this is the derivative of the inner function. So now we'll go ahead and simplify. This will give us negative 4 times sine x divided by cosine x. Well, sine x divided by cosine x is equal to tangent x, so this simplifies nicely to negative 4 tangent x. So yeah, no, I, I'm not gonna do that then. What's 1 over sine x then? This, this looks like it's more like uh, 2 cosine over sine. It's gonna be something funny. It's gonna be the secant, cosecant. Uh, Cosine over sine is cotangent, so it's going to be 2 cotan x. That's just going to be u prime. Or actually, f prime of x equals 2 cotangent x. I think it's cotangent. Yeah. Now we gotta derive this again, I'm assuming. For four, we substitute opposite side negative four, double prime of x, 
we'll find the derivative of the first derivative. So we'll find the derivative of negative 4 tan of x, which would be equal to negative 4 times the derivative of tangent x, which is equal to secant squared x. Notice how because tangent x is not a composite function, we didn't have to apply the chain rule given by this formula here. But even if we did, notice how u would be equal to x, which means u is prime would be equal to and what the heck is derive tangent x secant cos negative cosecant squared? What the heck? So it's gonna be two negative cosecant squared x. Is that really what they're looking for? Like really? See, I've never been able to get that. Flat out. No. So where did I mess up? It all looks. Cosine, sine. Four, two, u prime, u prime. And then he combined them. Is that where I messed up? Sine over cosine. Oh wait, the negative went to the four, and then sine over cosine, which is tangent. I had cotangent. So I had two cotangent x. And then, so it's all right. It's perfectly fine. I should label this f double prime of x. He kept his negative four. Well, he kept his four. I didn't have to negate mine. Kept that. And then the guy did, see I bet you the derivative of tan x is secant squared. Secant squared x. So then he just derived It was just an error input. Okay. What do I do? Make the u x? It doesn't really make sense. A v x is L and A. This one's getting. I like that color a lot. So, um, it's just gonna be. Oh, <laughs> natural log of 
two. All times two x. Um, I mean, yeah, that's something. Wow, I should have been able to get that if I had known my stuff. Well, hold on. Uh, this looks like inner function, outer function, but well, u equals ln x u prime equals 1 over x. So what's this going to be? 6 times 1 over x. Six ln x over x. I believe. Keep it. Change it. Flip it. But wait. They don't want that. They want this ln x. I believe. Divide that by x. That's it. Oh, that's the hour. So I'm going to be taking a small break. I don't know. If, I don't know if you want me to be just. It's not it. Oh, this is my little break. There, I'm using this app uh, called Forest for the first time right now. And, uh... Hopefully it's good. I'm trying to do the old 6010 Pomodoro because it's popular and that's what I've always done because it's popular. Uh, feel free to skip exactly 9 minutes and 40 seconds I had to get back to work. I am in the habit right now, I don't know if it's a good habit or a bad habit. But taping over every clock I can find because honestly the anxiety of uh, oh my god it's too late I'm gonna lose so much sleep or um, oh man that's my bedtime coming up in like an hour oh blah 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 um, it's too much and if work needs to get done I gotta not think about the time and also uh, if I'm just up here lollygagging, and I'll think, oh, this is about the time lunch should be. Maybe I'll go downstairs and eat some lunch. I gotta stop letting that control me, and I just gotta do the work and act like time is an abstract concept that humans made up, and it's not something that I should live my whole life by. So I'm, uh, I'm fixing up a ThinkPad, actually. Uh, the old uh, two third, uh, no T four thirty. Yeah. 
It was on a four parts on eBay for 30 bucks. And I'm putting in the 420 keyboard. I don't know if I'm going to BIOS flash it. I might, honestly. I, I really, really honestly might, depending on how easy it is to do in Linux. If it's easier, I'll do that. If it's Even if it's harder, I will just steal a copy of Windows just to do it. Um, but that depends if I want it, because there's honestly features of the 430 that I like better than the 420. So if I can keep the keyboard layout of that, I could deal without, I could deal with a couple buttons not working, at least like the delete key and stuff like that. I don't really care, I don't use it. Um, I know for one thing, uh, the arrow keys directly above it on the 430, it's page up, page down, which is extremely helpful. Where on the 420, it's like all the way up at the top. So I can't arrow key and page down at the same time. It's just a stupid workflow thing I've gotten into on my other 30 series. Yeah, that's pretty much, that's literally pretty much all I'm doing right now. School's a drag. But, you know, I, it's something I chose. It's really what I want to do. Not the schooling part, the actual work part. But yeah, man, just, uh... I guess this is living the dream, to be honest. Shoot, where would I be without doing this? You gotta have your reasons. But, I mean... I guess my huge inspiration for the whole study thing is the James Scholes, but I'm doing it a whole different way. I'm not trying to be a copycat but um, mostly I would rather be watching uh, one of his videos when I study but at the same time it's different I feel like I'd rather study a subject along with someone than just watching someone while they study it's I don't know. He his his personality is great, and his content is perfect for what it is. And everyone's studying the same things, but um, I'm really putting it out there and in the forefront um, exactly what is going on. I honestly don't watch James when he studies. Uh, I just do my own stuff on the side, anyways. But you know, if if there if there was a person that studied just you know engineering stuff mostly the math uh, I would totally watch that I really would because you know a couple of years ago I had no idea I never taken any math class above uh, algebra and I never really passed the first half of algebra I only ever passed algebra 2 so I'm, I'm such such a bad mathematician my brain is not calculated for it uh, just all the formative years are shot for me. So if, if there was someone out there that was doing the math that I knew I was going to have to do, I would have, I would have watched them. Which is why I know so much about like the Nancy Pye and the Chem Tutor, but it's different. They're teachers, you know? I'm kind of like my own study group which is sad. I hopefully maybe we'll find actual people to study with, but the pandemics after the whole thing up, man. But you know what? That's a really good thing to be upset about. You know, it's just people. I don't even like people as it is.
So for the for the pandemic to make everybody more introverted, I guess, uh, less less uh, social hassle, I guess. I'll be right back. time we got left in this wow still two minutes um yeah i installed uh arch linux for the first time successfully i've tried a couple times maybe twice and there was a road bump that i was stuck on for so long and it was just uh converting the right file type so I could actually install it the right way, although I didn't do it with swap files. Sue me. <laughs> 16 gigs of RAM is, I think, quite enough. I'm not going to be running more than like Firefox or Chromium in the terminal most times. Sometimes I'll run Discord in another window. Uh, it's honestly great. I would rate it the best linux distribution i've used if you don't care about your time because every linux distro i've installed i've installed plenty i've used it for more years than i'd like to say i was using linux before i even actually applied myself in school installing it on thumb drives like the cali linux boot drive because i thought hacking was cool and programming was awesome but I was getting 40s in all of my classes, and the school was, well, I didn't graduate with the highest honors, sadly, because of how hard I worked the last two years. But I have to, the first two, so there's no reward for getting back on track. There's no imp best improved the only people that are best improved is the people that they never thought would graduate and the people that they thought would be in prison hey there's the timer <laughs> okay I wonder if you can set it because I have to keep clicking like rest and study I wonder if I can like set it to do like study rest well, I've got two plants I, I guess the whole point of this app is like total focus time is 12 minutes I swear he studied longer than that what the heck I don't know uh, I focused for 12 minutes today I don't get it I said it for 60 minutes uh, let's go all right turned off certain permissions I don't really want to how do I set permissions hold on I really want to get this thing fixed so I can get the trees I don't know how. I don't know how. <laughs> so I'll set this thing down and hopefully it doesn't yell at me for not being focused. Shoot, man, I was laser. Well, regardless. <sighs> Ellen, you. 
It's close. It's not really yelling you. This is basic. Yeah, it's basic. So something LN X. It's not here. And it's not there. No. No, it is not. Now we'll look at some additional derivatives of log e, the natural log function, or log base e, for natural log x. Just want to get a calculator to the fact number one, so our derivative function is 2 divided by x. Oh no! Oh, what did I do? <laughs> it's just wow. Don't even need to explain it. Go! Oh, why such an easy one? God, I'm not by this. Worst part is when I'm on a test, it's gonna be like twice as hard as this one is for the easiest questions. It's like why why do they give us like softballs and then when it's game time just you know throwing curveballs? You know why why go underhanded to javelin throwing? Just ain't they ain't in the safety regulations sheet that I read. So we gotta break this down somehow. Oh man, wow. Higher order. If f of x equals 3x squared natural log 4x, we wanna find the first, second, and third derivative functions. The first thing we should recognize is that a given function is a product of two functions. We have 3x squared times the natural log 4x. So the quantity of derivatives will have to apply the product rule of differentiation given here. So if we want to find the derivative of f times g with respect to x, this will equal f times g prime plus g times. Oh, f prime. okay, okay, okay. So, the derivative uh, so is it more just like. f. G we left derivative of right times right derivative of left F G yeah so in that case Let's just do f, that's gonna be super easy. f equals 4x squared. Uh, I should list it better. f prime equals 8x. g equals ln 5x. g prime equals to be u. So let's just list as u. 5x u prime equals 5. 5 over 5x is just going to be 1 over x. So it's going to be. 4x squared times 1 over x, otherwise known as 4x squared. If 
divided by x, otherwise known as 4x. Makes sense. And, well, it's going to be that times g, otherwise known as ln 5x times eight X eight sixteen thirty two X Ln five X I really hope No, that breaks my heart. If f of x equals 3x over 2 one function, for the first function, notice how we haven't found any derivatives yet. We wrote out the product rule, and I will go back and find the natural log of u with respect to x. This will be equal to 1 over u times u prime. So the derivative would be an exponent, so my derivative is 6. So the derivative would be 1 over 4x times. Yeah, let's start this thing over. I forgot the whole LNU thing, to be honest. Four x squared times this is gonna be g prime. G prime is this, which no, I didn't forget that. It's totally gonna to be five x over five. Five x over five equals x. No, five over five x. equals 1 over x which does equal 4x squared over x Plus, oh snap, that's it, that's the mistake. But wait, that's an eight, and that six x thing that's also probably from the video. It's going to be close because it is g plus. Well, let's just keep going. G is well, it's going to be ln five x. 8x. This should be it. For at least f prime. I 
Oh, that shouldn't count. Oh my gosh. Say goodbye to all the work, man. Okay. I don't know if it's capital L. I don't think it is. G prime. It's gonna be one over x. Because it's gonna be u equals 6x. U prime equals 6. It's gonna be u prime over u. It's going to cancel out. It's going to be 1 over x. F is going to be 9x squared. This is going to be 18x. So what we're going to have is 9x squared times 1 over x, which is just going to be 9x plus natural log of 6x times 18x. So what we're left with is 9x plus 18x ln 6x. Dang right, man. That makes me feel freaking fantastic. Absolutely love getting math questions right. No one likes to do math. Everyone likes to get the problem right. Okay. And I think if I hit that... No. It's my other uh, computer. So now we have to do f prime of x, or f double prime as it actually was. So f prime, double prime of x. 9 plus, oh, that was the hard part. No, it wasn't. This is going to be 18x ln 6x. Is that you? I think it is. U equals ln 6x. U prime equals 6x. It's itself going to be something. Let's watch the video. Our first equals six x, and the second function g we equal to the natural log four x. So find the prime rule. We're going to have f times g prime plus g. Ah, oh, okay. I hate that so much, but this stupid little thing pops up. And uh, 
Wow. It's gonna be one of Rex. Just always is. I shouldn't even shouldn't even do the work. It's, just, it's always X. Well, yeah, let's actually start doing this then, so... It's going to be 18x times... 1 over x, which is the same thing as dividing by x. So really it's 18 plus. This is going to be ln 6x times. f times g prime, g times 18. Again. So what this is going to be, it's going to be 9 plus 18, it's going to be 27 times, 27 times 18 ln 6x. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. 27 Uh huh. Did I do something wrong? I said with a halfway grin. He said, "No, that just happens every now and then." Okay. That actually is uh odd. How did I get? Times six. And you know what? Number plus number times this. I got uh, number. plus number times this. It's just, so what they got is number plus number times number. Number plus number times number. It's the same thing, and then they combined it, and I combined it. Plus Yes Yes It's what it's all about Oh my gosh Zero plus derivative of eighteen ln x ln six x. That feels 
Man, I really should know this. My brain is lagging behind. Mental lag. I've returned. I've reverted. I've returned. <laughs> I'm back to PlayStation 2 mode, man. I'm PlayStation 1 hardware. So, let's see. 18 LN. 6x. Yes, yeah, that does equal u. u equals 6x. u prime equals, oh my god, don't do this again. 6 over 6x. It's 1 over x. I fell for it. I fell for it every single time. So it's, it's just going to be 1 over x. Oh yes, what's it going to be? That ended so sad. What a beautiful number just turned into that. F to the fourth? Oh my gosh, is that F quadruple prime? Is that what that's supposed to be? I mean, I'll try it. I will. One, two, three, four. Well, actually, f one, two, three of x equals eighteen over x. So, f one, two, three, four of x equals x. Times zero It's a derivative of X one Yeah So, 0 minus 18 over 1. Please tell me I'm right. I'm not. Low D high minus high D low. All over low low. Well, we can always do it the old hard fashioned way.
Ah, it's negative 18. What? X stays alive. Low. Low times D high minus high times D low. all over x squared. Oh, because it isn't low, isn't it? It's not d low low. See here. I think this is the old FG thing, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Love to see it. My guess is it's going to be something like 6 plus 12 ln 5x. But let's see. It's definitely just going to be 6 plus. F G It's going to be 18 plus 12 on 5x.
Could factor it. I don't want to. Done. That's like. <laughs> One out of three, but hey, we're plugging right along. Ten minutes. Wow. Of this would be negative x, 
again, we're different in respect to the T, so the negative x times the x dt. Hmm. Very interesting stuff.
should make sense that revenue is increasing at $200 a day. The costs are also increasing at $50 per day. That would give us an increase in profit of $150 per day. Take a look at another example. Pebble is dropped into a calm pond causing ripples to form eccentric circles. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a rate of 6 inches per second. When the radius is 4 feet, at what rate is the total area of the disturbed water changing? It's very so interesting. Let's look at what's happening. Here we have, here we have a pebble dropped in water and it's forming ripples. Let's record all information that's given. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of 6 inches per second. So that would represent the change in R with respect to the time, which is 6 inches per second. Next, when the radius is 4 feet, so the radius is 4 feet, at what rate is the area of change? We want to find the change in the area respect to time. When we're talking about areas, our formula is going to be the area of the circle, which is area of the entire square. And one thing I notice over here, these units are in feet and these units are in inches, so that's not going to work. Let's go ahead and rewrite this as 0 0.5 feet per second. Next, we'll find the derivative of both sides with respect to the t. So on the left side, we have the derivative of a with respect to the t would be the a dt. The number pi is a constant. The derivative of this term would be 2 times pi r to the first times 2 r dt. So we're trying to find the dt, and now we have all the information we need to determine that. So let's sub in the known values 2 times pi times r, which we said was 4, and the r dt is 0 0.5. This value is approximately 12.57. We're dealing with the change in area. So this would be an inches squared per second. The change in area is approximately 12.75 inches squared per second when the radius is exactly 4 feet and the change in the radius with respect to time is 0.5 feet per second. Let's take a look at one more. The Change in the rate of the time is 0.5 feet per second. Let's take a look at one more. An airplane is flying at an altitude of 6 miles on a path that will take it directly over a radar station, but the distance s from the radar is decreasing at a rate of 400 miles per hour. When s equals 10, what is the speed of the plane? Okay, there's a lot going on here, so let's get started. We know this is given as 6 miles the vertical distance from the plane to the ground. The distance s is decreasing at a rate of 400 miles per hour. That's telling us that the s to t is equal to negative 400 miles per hour. We know it's negative because it's decreasing. s is equal to 10 miles. We want to know the speed of the plane. The speed is measured in relation to the ground we want to know the x and t. How fast is x changing with respect to the time? That would be the speed of the plane. Well, the equation that we're going to use that relates to these three would be the Pythagorean theorem, which states that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the square of the legs. So what we need to do now is find the derivative of this equation with respect to t on both sides. So let's take this over to the next screen. 
Okay, so I transfer all the information we had on the previous stream. Let's go ahead and find the derivative with respect to t. We have 2s times the s to t is equal to 2x times the x to t. Again, we're applying the chain rule because these terms do not have t in them. And then the derivative of a constant would be 0. Remember, our goal is to find the x and t, so what we're going to do now is divide both sides by 2x and simplify. So what we have is the x and t is equal to s over x times the x and t. We know the value of x and the value of the x and t, but we do not know the value of the x yet. So we need to kind of think through this again. If we go back to our triangle. We know the infant we're concerned about, s is equal to 10. So let's go ahead and label s with 10. And now we know two sides of a right triangle, we can use the value of the to find the remaining side, which is x. So we'll have 10 squared is equal to 6 squared plus x squared. So 64 equals x squared, so x is equal to 8. And now we can find the speed of the plane, or dx dt. We have s is equal to 10, x is equal to 8, dx to t is equal to negative 400. When we get dx to t equal to negative 500 miles per hour. The reason this is negative is because it's actually velocity. So our actual speed, we can take the absolute value of this so the plane is going 500 miles per hour. I hope you found these examples useful. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Okay. The suit or height of a triangle is increasing at a rate of 2.5 centimeters per minute, while the area of the triangle is increasing at a rate of 3 centimeters squared per minute. We want to know at what rate the base of the triangle is changing when the altitude or height is 12 centimeters and the area is 84 centimeters squared. So it's always helpful to start with a sketch. Here's our triangle. The segment here would be the altitude or height of the triangle. This side here would be the base of the triangle. And since this problem deals with the area of the triangle, we're going to be using the formula area equals one half base times height. And now let's take a look at the given information again. We're told the altitude or height of the triangle is increasing at a rate of 2.5 centimeters per minute, which means the HTT, the change in the height, with respect to time, is equal to 2.5 centimeters per minute. If this value is positive because it's increasing, it will be decreasing in the negative. We're also told the area of the triangle is increasing at a rate of 3 centimeters squared per minute, which means the ADT equals 3 centimeters squared per minute. Our job is to find the rate at which the base of the triangle is changing. So we're going to find the BDT when the altitude or height is 12 centimeters. Say h is equal to 12 centimeters, and the area is equal to 84 square centimeters. So we also know the area is equal to 84 centimeters squared. Notice well, how we're not given the length of the base, but we can find the base using the area formula here, since we know the height is 12 centimeters and the area is equal to 84 centimeters squared. So the first step. Let's go ahead and find the length of the base, given the height and the area. So to find B, we have 84 equals 1 half times the base times the height, which we know is 12 centimeters. This gives us 84 equals 6B, divide both sides by 6. And we have B equals 14 centimeters. Let's go ahead and record that. It's 14 centimeters. And now to find the BDT, we're going to differentiate the equation A equals one half base times height, 
Because we're differentiating both sides of the equation with respect to t, we we'll want to perform implicit differentiation. Notice on the right side, if we have a times h, we'll have to apply the product rule in order to find this derivative. The derivative of a with respect to t would be da dt. And on the right side, the derivative of 1 half b times h with respect to t would be 1 half times the derivative of b times h, which again requires the product rule. So we have the first function, which would be times the derivative of the second function, h, with respect to t, which would give us dh dt. Plus the second function, which is h, times the derivative of b with respect to t, which would be db dt. Now we can perform substitution for dA dt, b, dA dt, h, and then solve for db dt in order to determine the rate at which the base is changing using the given information. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. Again, here's the derivative with respect to t. Our goal is to find db dt. So we'll substitute the given values here on the right into our equation. dA dt is equal to 3 centimeters squared per minute. Down B was 14 centimeters. HDT is equal to 2.5 centimeters per minute. H is given as 12 centimeters, and we're trying to find DBDT. Change in the base with respect to time. So for the next step, let's go ahead and clear these parentheses. So we'll distribute one half. So we'll have three equals. 14 times 2.5 times 1 half is 17.5. 1 half times 12 is 6, so we have plus 6 dB dt. Now we'll subtract 17.5 on both sides. That will give us negative 14.5 equals 6 dB dt. Divide both sides by 6. So we have dB dt. to negative 14.5 divided by 6 is actually negative 29 twelfths. Notice how it's negative. So the base is decreasing at a rate of 29 twelfths centimeters per minute. For a decimal approximation, we can say the AGT approximately equal to negative 2.417 centimeters per minute. This means the length of the base is decreasing at a rate of 29 twelfths centimeters per minute under the given conditions, meaning when dHdt equals 2.5 centimeters per minute, dAdt equals 3 centimeters squared per minute, h equals 12 centimeters, the area is equal to 84 centimeters squared, and the base is equal to 14 centimeters. So it's important to recognize that this rate of change is only true given all of these conditions here on the right. Okay, yeah, I hope you found this helpful. Yeah, no, that was pretty sweet. That was pretty sweet. At noon, ship A is 30 nautical miles to the left of ship B. This is ship A and this is ship B. The distance between the two ships would be 30 miles. Next, ship A is sailing west at 16 knots. So ship A is sailing in this direction. And ship B is sailing north at 15 knots. So ship B is sailing in this direction. How fast in knots is the distance between the ships changing at 4 p.m.? Well, first thing to notice is from noon to 4 p.m. would be 4 hours. And therefore, for this problem, t time equals 4 hours. Now going back to our diagram, let's let this length here be equal to x miles. This length here is equal to y miles, and the length between the two ships, s miles. Now let's begin to list the given information. This ship A is sailing west at 16 knots. X is changing at that rate, and therefore dx dt is equal to 
through 16 knots. And because ship B is sailing north of 15 knots, UIDT would be 15 knots. Because we're going to find how fast the distance is changing between the two ships, we're looking for VSDT. To find VSDT, we need an equation that relates S, X, and Y, which we can then differentiate to find VSDT. Because we have a right triangle here, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to form our equation. S squared must equal X squared plus Y squared. Before we differentiate this with respect to t, though, let's determine some more information. Let's find x, y, and s when t equals 4. When t equals 4, x would be equal to this distance here, which would be 30 miles, or 30, plus the rate of change times the time. And because the x t equals 16 knots, this length would be 30 plus 16 knots times the time of 4 hours is equal to 94 miles. Y is equal to the rate of change times 4 hours, which would be 15 times 4, or 60 miles. So let's also find the length of S, when X equals 94 and Y equals 60. So S squared would be equal to 94 squared plus 60 squared, we know S has to be positive, so we have to take the square root of both sides of the equation. We would have S equals square root of 94 squared plus 60 squared, which would be the square root of 12,436, which would be approximately 111.52 miles. Now that we have all the information we need, let's find the derivative of this equation here with respect to t on the next slide. So we have the derivative of s squared with respect to t must equal the derivative of x squared plus y squared with respect to t. So that would be 2s times ds dt equals 2x times ds dt plus 2y times dy dt. Because we can divide both sides by 2, that would give us s times ds dt equals x times dx dt plus y times dy dt. And then we'll divide both sides by s to solve for ds dt. So we have ds dt equals x times dx dt plus y times dy dt divided by s. And then we have this equation here for dx dt. We can perform substitutions for x, y, s, and dx dt and dy dt to find dx dt. So when t equals 4, dx dt would equal 2. All right. And I'm just going to give myself this little extra minute. Times the x dt, which is 16, plus y, which is 60. You know what? I think I know why my focus thing only counts 15 minutes. That's when my phone auto turns off. But let me just finish this up. What? A whole of the slide? Up to 2,404 divided by the square root of 12,436, and this would be knots. Let's get a decimal approximation for this. The SDT My gosh. would be approximately 
you can see here, it would be approximately 21.56 knots. So we can say at 4 p.m., the distance. Bam. Okay. I actually do wonder what time it is. Oh my god, it's 1.30. Oh man. Uh, 60 points available. I mean, there's six videos at 10, 10 points a pop. Ouch. Wait a second, these are assignments. Five points. One video. I'll do Newton's method and uh, after the break and call it a night because I know I didn't study a ton, but I do need sleep. Uh, if I go to bed at 2, wake up at 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's going to be enough sleep. Perfect. Anything less than seven hours of sleep is kind of six hours of sleep is kind of pushing it. I've done it for a long time. I can function on it, but uh, I need the clarity, the extra clarity, because even at my sharpest, I'm foggy. Very briefly, I'm just hyper focused. But when I am, it's it's, uh, it's nice. I wish I could do it forever or and not that I wish I could turn it off and on when I wanted yeah Yeah, man. I'll tell you though, this is um, this is pretty early on in the school, like week four, week three, and I've burned through an entire uh, notebook just doing these calc things. I've not burned through a pen yet, <laughs> which is good. Oh, man. Oh, I don't even think I finish talking about the ThinkPad. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, going to be a IPS display, uh, 1080p, 
with the FHD adapter and then uh, the keyboard which I got a chickeny because there's three kinds of T430 or T420 keyboards one of them is complete garbage and the other two are fantastic and I've heard chickeny is the hardest to find but it is the best so that's what I went with I passed pretty much all the rest up and I'm just gonna go for the best first you know why waste my time and then they're all kind of the same price anyway you know what's 10 bucks extra here or there you know it's gonna be like the thing you feel when you're using the computer you're not gonna be you know touching all the bezels and the screen well, actually touch screens are a thing now in laptops but uh, this <laughs> this predates that you're just gonna be typing and uh, you're not even gonna be using the the little touch pad you're gonna be using that old track point it's goaded the best mouse uh, for a laptop ever except for when they drift that sucks but we don't talk about that it's a secret no one in the thinkpad community will admit to <laughs> track point drift <laughs> oh man I swear my subwoofer moves more and more every day I'm gonna try to like push it back. Too much rumble. <laughs> like plain wood floors plus plus rumble. I mean, it's like uh, those little bug things they used to have. You'd like there'd be like an on button switch at the bottom. Need like vibrate like crazy and just run all around man uh, shoot I don't even know what the name of that is Hexbug I think unless I'm thinking of Hex Girls from Scooby Doo I'm thinking it's Hexbug because all the all the stuff you'd get from was like the hexagons that's how you'd build their uh their houses and little tanks and stuff to keep them in little playgrounds <laughs> this thing is so garbage. It's the first guitar, I think, the first ever guitar I've ever had. It's uh, like a Spanish guitar with brass frets and horrible action, and there's a hole in the back of it. And it does not hold tune. It's never ever in tune. <laughs> But it makes sound good enough. <laughs> I 
hope I don't I lay it on the floor and then have it stand. I don't even care to lean it up against a wall. I just lay it on the floor, man. I hope I don't step on it. Push the top right through. Okay, that's the timer. Let's get through this. Let me ask 30 minute video. 10, that's not horrible. I think we're back where we started. Unless you weren't there for this. I don't remember. He did that quick. Smart. Thank you. 
sure that our table features on S. That second window should be independent variable is on S. So now we'll go to our table feature and just do the table. Second graph, type that it could be one. Combine one is our function value, that's going to be one. Divide derivative by two, that's four. Now scroll over to y3, we'll register y4 as well. Wow. No, that was helpful. Assignment, assignment. We just got six of these. Oh. Well, that one was easy enough. <laughs> so I've got uh, six, eight questions left. That's doable by tomorrow. Well, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you on the next one.